All right, welcome everyone to the Akpai Maintainers meeting. Um, as always, just a couple of reminders. Uh, this is a Linux Foundation call, Hyperledger call. Uh, so the antitrust policy is in effect. Uh, also the Hyperledger code of conduct. So please bear that in mind. Um, so today the agenda is pretty open. Um, there are some things that we want to check up on. Uh, 1.0 release progress, I think is the big one. Um, but besides that, uh, if you have PRs or, or other issues that you'd like to discuss or, or bring up, um, I think we've got plenty of time for that today. Um, so with that, um, a quick review of the PRs that we've got pending here. Um, let's start from the bottom and work up. So this one, we've declared that this will not be a 1.0 PR. Um, Patrick hasn't had a chance to look into it either. Um, so we'll ignore that for the moment. The Anon Creds migration guide, um, we do have marked as 1.0 um, and we've got some pending changes requested, it looks like. I think I've updated this. I just haven't, oh, comment on it. Yeah. Okay. I will do that as well. So it's clear that it's ready for some more time. Okay, cool. So we'll get that. And the the actual migration endpoint has already been merged, right? So this is just the documentation for the migration process, right? Yeah, like controllers, the endpoints that they're using are slightly different. So it's outlining that stuff and then right. how to use the endpoint. That's it. Cool. Uh, so the AIO HTTP API spec PR, uh, we had some discussion on this during the ACPUG call this past week. Um, I think we basically landed where we need to do some uh, investigation to see if there's any alternatives to this approach in terms of getting these up to date. Uh, so doing a Python 3.12 upgrade is a possibility for us. Um, it's not necessarily a super urgent thing for us for us to upgrade Python right now, um, but eventually it will be a problem. Um, and unmaint unmaintained libraries are always a little bit um, I don't know what word to use here. Suspicious. Um, we should be aware of them at least, I guess. Um, uh, since our Acapo call, I have not had an opportunity to look into this any further. Um, anybody else happen to have a chance to look into the API spec library? Yeah. Okay. If we do decide to go with uh, Python 3.12 as the official release, as the official Python release for the 1.0 release of Akapai, um, that would be something we would have to resolve. If we can push that off a little bit further and stay on 3.9, we can ignore that for a little bit. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, this one, overly strict validation. I think this is just, okay, it's now merged. Um, cool, okay. I think I enabled auto merge. That's how that got in, okay. So that's done. So that's nice to have taken care of. Um, the Dependabot PR. There's some pretty good discussion on this during the ACPUG call, some back and forth. Um, I haven't had a chance to follow up on these, but I suspect this is probably just about ready to go. Um, so this one might just be a matter of uh, updating the base branch um, and then getting some more reviews on it before we get it merged in. Uh, did anybody have any further comments on Dependabot configuration for Akapai repo? I think the main concern has been just making sure that we don't end up in Dependabot PR hell where there's you know, 65 open PRs like we ended up with on the uh, plugins repo. 
But I, I think there's also a, a, a decent strategy to addressing that particular issue, which is rather than going through and individually updating or merging those PRs, if you you have to manually do this step, of course, it's not going to be done for us automatically by Dependabot, but if we go through and then just perform all the updates ourselves uh, with a script or, or whatever, um, the Dependabot PRs will automatically close once it detects that those dependencies have been updated. Um, so that's a decent way for us to address large numbers of dependency updates at once. Okay, um, then we've got doc verifiable credential data integrity credentials in Akapai. Um, okay, so we've gotten some feedback back from the original authors after requesting some changes, but I haven't seen those changes come in just yet. Um, so I, I take it we'll be waiting on this one a little bit longer until those arrive. Yeah, I don't know uh, when we're going to get the updates for this one, but yeah, there's updates required. So. Okay. Uh, is this something that we would consider something we want to make sure gets into the 1.0 release? I guess it's just a developer documentation more than... Yeah, well, this is related to um, a bunch of the other VCDI stuff that's going on, right? So there's been one PR that's been merged with uh, the issue credential. They're still working on present proof. They've got a bunch of work they've done in their own repo, but we're still waiting on that. And then the documentation, and then they also have to um, add the revocation support into the issue credential. So I don't, I don't think it's anything we should hold up the 1.0 release for. Gotcha. I mean, it's up to Stephen, I guess, if he if he wants yeah. to, but I don't think we're going to see within the next maybe two three weeks at least okay. before we, all that stuff is finished. Okay, interesting. Good to know. Uh, so, but they have merged a portion of the code already in, into the issue credentials. So those those changes will be present in the one release, but just dormant. Is that? Kind of what yeah, we expect. it's uh, well, unless um, it's in the v2 issue credential API. So you can if you if you put the correct payload in, then you'll be able to issue a vcdi okay. credential. And it's also um, being enabled in the demo. So you if you run the demo with credential type vcdi, then that's the, the credential type that it uses for issuing. Cool. Okay. Okay, then we've got clear revocation logic. Um, so this. That's just do... a small one. Somebody was complaining that the endpoint doesn't work the way it's described. Yeah, okay. And I, I've already thrown an approval on this one. So once our actions actually get running, um, should hopefully be able to get that one merged in. Um, we've got a dependency update from Dependabot to take a look at. Uh, and then this final one here, DidCon v2 initial implementation. So um, Micah and Colton from Indicio um, recently presented in the ACPUG meeting, I think maybe two two meetings ago, on uh, some DidCon v2 work that we've been doing. Uh, so this is... Um, Let's see. So this is like preliminary did combi to support. Um, and it's gated with a feature flag experimental did combi to. Um, so it's not intended to be in a complete state yet. Um, uh, but by getting it merged in, we can iteratively work with it from you know the main repo without having to worry about long running, you know, diverging branches and stuff like that. Uh, so that, that was kind of the goal of these changes, just to get a minimum baseline of, of support in. Um, I don't think there's any reason that this shouldn't go into a 1.0 release. I, I think it's at a relatively clean state as well. Um, but I, I also don't think there's any particular urgency for this code to arrive into the 1.0 uh, release either. So um, I won't mark it as being a 1.0 thing that we'd like to see. Um, but yeah, it's, it's there. Um, I tagged a few people for, for reviews. Um, so your input would be appreciated. 
Uh, let's see. Anything else on PRs that we would like to discuss? Open pending PRs. Are there any PRs that we expect to be opening up in the near future that should be uh, arriving into a 1.0 release? Um, just I was doing some stuff with the unit test uh, reporting on PRs. I think it was like a year ago it disappeared when we use GitHub Actions. But um, just having some conversation on what to do if we want to change away from CodeCub or not, because they do some weird stuff with GitHub Actions and uh, it's called like tokenless. Uh, the way you upload the results to CodeCub. I don't know. I was having troubles with it. And uh, anyway, their, their project just isn't in that good of a state for the way we require forked PRs. So I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what to do with that. But it would be nice to have that, but I don't think it needs to be in one or any. 1.0. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't personally know much about the code cub, uh, project or, or service, I guess. Um, it did of course used to run on the repo. And so I was familiar with, with the reports that it would provide. And it was nice to get it as like a comment on the PR similar to the sonar quality check thing that we have set up right now that I don't think is actually doing very much, but it still runs in comments. Um, so it was helpful to get those reports. Um, if you go to the closed, um, it's this, uh, the one with 14 comments. There's That's where the, I closed it because, but if anyone wants to look at that and comment on it, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what to do. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah, interesting. It, it was working, but it's yeah, it's weird the what's going on with their project in general, right? Now. Anyway, how, if I figure something out, then I it's, I think we could get it in one point If not, there's no point in holding anything up. Yeah. Do you anticipate pushing through with doing it with CodeCov, or are you? entertaining other options mostly out of curiosity i guess uh other options i think like okay you can do it with sonar cube and we already have all that auth set up so that might be a good option or yeah yeah okay yeah i'm all for using tools that we've already got set up for the repo that seems like a reasonable simplification for sure cool Um, okay, let's take a scan at some open issues. Um, no, I just closed. No, that was a PR. Okay, uh, open issues. So the open SSF scorecard, I think this has been merged. So I think we could probably close that one as completed. Um, so that's that. Manage integration test workflow. Um, yeah, this one I'm looking at, at places where we're duplicating coverage on PRs. So like if we're already testing the connection stuff when we're doing, uh, like when we're issuing credentials and verifying them and stuff, so we're already doing the connection. We're already doing the issuance and stuff. Um, we might not have to run those with every PR and we might be able to run those like on a daily test or something or when we do a release. Right. right. So um, so they don't take like an hour for every PR. That's kind of where I'm. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Okay. So to, to pair it back to you just a little bit. So because credential issuance, for example, already requires that a connection be established between the two agents, there's no need for us to separately run connections tests on, on every single PR is what you're saying. That's what I'm thinking. Like, uh, it runs the connection test 
for different configurations. So some of them are good, but yeah, like if you go through the entire flow and issue a credential and revoke it and stuff, then you don't have to test that you can issue a credential if you're already testing, yeah. like you're already covering it with revocation tests and stuff like that. So it's more to get the, make sure we're covering the test with the PR test, but we don't have to cover the same stuff twice. I'm just trying to look at all the tests and figure out where we're duplicating tests. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because okay. I think we could get it down to like a more manageable level, like like 20 or 30 minutes instead of an hour, just by doing that. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Yeah. Um. So the, the thing that seems to take the longest in, in my observations for the integration tests is the fact that it's spinning up and spinning down containers for just about every set of tests, right? Yeah, well, that's why it takes so long because we have, I don't, I can't remember the number, but there might be like 20 or 30 tests that are just testing the connection between two agents. And yeah, it spins up a Docker container for each one. So it's that, that by itself is going to take, I don't know how long, but I think just those tests take probably 20 minutes or something. Yeah. So I think there's like better ways to test it. I think we should still use these tests, but um, yeah, that's kind of where the discussion around what you're using for testing in DCO might be better sometimes too. Yeah, the reason that it starts up the, the containers every time is because it's starting them up with the different configurations like single yeah. tenant, multi-tenant and so on and so forth. And that was because uh, prior to having the integration test, that was where we would run into a lot of issues. Like we would have, you know, some feature that we'd added, but it wasn't fully tested with multi-tenancy or, you know, it, it worked with the connection, the original connection protocol, but it didn't work with data exchange or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, you're right. We don't, we, I think we need to keep it, but we need to probably just, you know, kind of scope out how much of that kind of testing we want to do versus, you know, just spinning up, you know, a particular configuration of Akapai and then running a bunch of tests under that configuration. Yeah. I think um, with the multi-tenant settings uh, changes that were recently merged in as well, we have an opportunity to also alter the configuration of an agent without necessarily spinning it all the way down, um, which I don't know that that was previously possible. I haven't looked that closely and, it, and it's been a long time, but like we might be able to achieve some of the same like adjust config retest sort of scenarios without having to go all the way down to container fully stopped and, and then started back up with the new configuration as well. Um, but yeah, having yeah, a couple of, of some of it, uh, some of the restart is um, like it, it uses a lot of the code from the demo. And so there's there's some options in the demo that um, they control, you know, from a demo point of view, what features of Akapai it uses, but it doesn't necessarily change the underlying uh, Akapai configuration. So even even some of the restarts that we're doing. You know, it's not really necessary to restart Akabai. It's just because that's how the demo worked. And then that's kind of led into how the integration test worked. Yeah, OK. Yeah, so this is something we've been talking about for a while, and I've been thinking about for a while as well. It was kind of what motivated a lot of what we did with the Akabai minimal example stuff that we have in, in DCO's work right now. Um, something I, I have like tentative plans to do is to just do some experimentation with setting up like an Akapai test repo. Um, not necessarily that it will continue to live as an independent repo if we decided to adopt some of the methodology out of it, but just to experiment with, um, uh, what sort of test flows we can achieve by, you know, having a, a couple or, or a few 
long lived uh Akpai Docker containers and then um inducing scenarios between them with a, a remote controlling you know test apparatus, I guess. Um but yeah, I haven't had any time yet to actually sit down and do that. But uh, that is something that's on my to-do list, something I'd like to do. Um, and then I, I can kind of come back and share what I've learned from that process. Um, and we can see if it's something that we would like to to try out in the Akapai repo or not. Um, I, I fully agree. I think it makes sense for us to continue with like having the full down configuration change back up um, I think those chain those tests are not invalidated by a long a, a different integration testing approach, I guess. Um, but maybe we can get something that runs a little bit quicker on PRs at least, and still gets us pretty decent coverage. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping to do. But... Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, we've got a number of issues that have been opened up fairly recently. Are there any in particular that anybody wanted to raise and discuss today? I think we've got about five to six minutes left on, on the call, technically. Okay, um, anything else on the 1.0 release or um, addressing some of the technical debt? Um, we just merged in the NDSDK drop PR, so that I think cuts out a pretty significant chunk of technical debt. I'm really happy to have that one in. Um, so looking forward to not having to worry about NDSDK anymore. Um, any other topics for this call today? Cool. Uh, let's call it here for today then, uh, five minutes early. Thanks everyone. Um, thanks for your, your input and feedback. Um, this was helpful for me at least. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get more of these PRs merged in as GitHub figures its stuff out here. <laughs> so thanks everyone. See you all next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.